welcome to Empowering Small Businesses, the Stop at Nothing campaign in association with CNBC TV 18 and Money Control, brought to you by Dell Technologies. And I'm your host, Ruchira Sharma. This is a series of engaging and insightful conversations focused on the critical role of digital transformation in building business resilience for small and medium enterprises. The topic for today's discussion is Tech First Small Businesses Showing the Way Forward. Without a doubt, Technology plays a critical role in an organization's ability to evolve with the market and also add value for its customers. Yet small and medium enterprises continue to grapple with challenges, including budgeting, talent struggles, and cultural changes. In this webinar, we will focus on digital first businesses and try to understand what all is possible if small businesses can innovate with the power of technology. What are the common roadblocks that they face and how have they overcome these to survive in the new normal? And for this discussion, I'm joined by a panel of experts and I would like to begin by introducing them. We have with us Ms. Sheheva Shorat, CEO of the Luke Story, Ms. Madhura Das Gupta, UN awardee and founder and CEO Aspire for Her, Ms. Anisha Jyoti, co-founder at Language Curry, and Sri Kripa Srinivasan, Vice President, Dell Global Analytics. So it's great to have you all here with us. And before we dive in, I'd just like to bring in some statistics for our audience. As per a recent survey conducted by the International Data Corporation in collaboration with Cisco, 69% SMBs have quickened their digitization processes to confront the current challenges which were further accelerated by the pandemic. And they want to be almost, uh, you know, have their businesses 20% digitized by the end of 2021 or going forward into 2022. So my question is uh, first to you, uh, Ms. Shaver, that the COVID pandemic has specifically accelerated the entire pace of digital adoption across sectors, across businesses, and businesses have been able to, uh, you know, think digital first. So what does this mindset really entail according to you? See, I would say um, that's uh, started with a revolution mm -hmm. because uh, COVID has uh, given us a situation wherein uh, the many existing businesses, I would not say that only SMEs, um, uh, but also, you know, the businesses which are established businesses were also facing a uh, huge uh, mm -hmm. difficulty reaching out to their customer. Uh, their distribution were also stopped. And uh, I would say the digital uh, mindset or the strategy had played a big role. And I would say that many startup has actually born during the COVID-19. And that has shown us a bigger picture that using technology can give us not only the success, but also help us in many other aspects of the business be it a cost efficiency, be it reaching out to the customers across the globe or saving time and money. So, of course, this is a new change. And I would say that change is only constant and we should adopt as early as possible and get going. All right. Miss um, Anisha, what about you? What is your uh, insight here? Do you think a digital mindset is about technology, tools, skills, or is it about a cultural mind shift? Uh, you know, it's a bit of both. But of course, the COVID times really made life easy through tech. You know, whether that was online deliveries uh, that we had to, you know, sort of uh, rely on co during COVID times and now it's in habit or, uh, you know, learning a new skill. So you're fulfilling your goals as of mastering a skill as for your convenience. So, you know, all of these things picked up in COVID and the value add was so strong that it's here to say and it's pretty evident uh, that, you know, people have taken on these uh, things and also culturally as well, you know, our societies. And uh, this is, um, I mean, the amazing thing that happened, it is cut across all, you know, age groups. Uh, so there was this particular age group that just did not want to go online for studying or for, you know, grocery shopping. And so we see a huge shift there on uh, in adoption. Uh, you know, oh. a similar thing for language curry, you know, we've had learners uh, that we expected, you know, like between the age group of 18 to 35. But we've had a really engaged learners that are above 50 uh, category as well, learning a new language. So, yeah, it's been great. All right. 
Ms. Mathura, what is your input here? What is your own personal learning? How have you been able to stay relevant and scale your operations uh, while, you know, making this digital shift? Thank you for the question. I think I'll just explain a little bit of what we do and when we started, and that will answer some of your questions automatically. Uh, so we're Aspire for Her. We started Aspire for Her on Women's Day 2020, uh, which is essentially 8th of March 2020. And you know what really happened to the world right after that. So we were really one of those companies that uh, you were talking about. We were born during COVID, and we did not have a choice. Uh, in many ways, I'm glad that we did not have a choice because we are literally trying to change the world. Uh, we want to motivate women to enter and stay in the workforce. We want to add 1 million women in the workforce by 2025 by using the power of communities and networks. Everything that we have done ever since our birth has always been digital first. That's the only way we know. And that's the way uh, we have grown and thrived over the past two plus years. All right. Great. Thank you for that answer. Uh, I'd like to bring you in, Mr. Kripa. Uh, you at Dell, of course, have come up with end-to-end -end solutions for small businesses. So what do you think it really uh, means for a business to go digital? What are the kind of changes that they need to make in terms of skills, technology, tools, and people? Your question was on scale, technology, tools, and people. I'm going to take the whole session for this now. Uh, so, so thank you, thank you, first of all, for having me here. From from uh, from Dell's perspective, we've always been a, a digital first advocate. So this is uh, this is not really a new concept for us. We've got uh, we've got uh, you, know, uh, you know folks like you all over the world. We've got our teams all over the world. So digital first was no choice. Uh, these last two and a half years, I want to say three, have really sort of expedited a whole lot in terms of uh, in terms of what uh, uh, what we can do in this uh, in, in in this digital first era. So first of all, uh, you know we're working from everywhere, and all of us I think are sitting in our respective homes right now and uh, and uh, taking our calls and in, 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 and doing a fantastic webinar. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like like uh, you know Anisha pointed out, I believe. Anisha, so it, you know, nobody thought online school was going to happen. Uh, you know, accounting teams, uh, you know, doing month close and audit. You know, nobody thought these things are going to happen in terms of uh, in terms of where we are. So, what what does it take for this to uh, really happen? Number one is that uh, in this last one and a half years, you realize customers are ready, are ready to sort of uh, you know also be purchasers from any anywhere where they are. Uh, and also, that, also it, that means that as an organization, you should be ready to really scale uh, wherever your customers are. So you are able to sell textile, uh, groceries, whatever, wherever you are, uh, uh, IT equipment, wherever you are. We've done that in the last two and a half years, years in Dell ourselves. Uh, from a from a technology perspective, uh, you know, when you when you really want speed of action, you know, you you need broadband for sure, you need compute power for sure. Uh, how do you sort of enable large-scale activity happening all over the world. I mean, you used to have data centers sitting in, in offices. Now you need to have data centers in everybody's home. You can't have those kind of things. How do you make it happen? And the last thing you do, when I mean, you're doing a webinar right now, what is the, what is the kind of things you need to have a ready for a studio at home? Mm -hmm. So I think, from, I think you called out saying, you know, is it a cultural thing? Is it a mindset, mindset shift? Uh, yes, of course, it is a cultural shift. And also to sort of uh, be able to say yes, we're going to make it have it, we make make it make it really happen. We've demonstrated the last three years have been very busy years for us in Dell because we've made it happen because uh, the culture in in our customers is make it happen. Uh, okay. So so that's what that's what my take is. Yeah. All right. Coming to you, Anisha, um, lockdowns and supply chain disruptions, of course, have brought a new urgency to meeting digital transformation goals and forced organizations to kind of speed up the entire pace. So what are the impediments that you think small, medium businesses face while making the, uh, you know, taking the digital first approach, if you could share your own experience? Um, I think first and foremost, you know, uh, a lot of small business owners, um, 
uh, you know, do not have the tech expertise. They might not uh, be a techie. Uh, they might not have a partner or co-founder who's a techie himself. So the first thing is they figure out, you know, where and how, and then they uh, uh, maybe, you know, think about outsourcing the tech or hiring somebody. So that's the first challenge that, you know, most of the small business, medium business owners, and that's also, um, you know, a, a, a mindset as well that uh, you know there's something that you can't do so you know um, how are we going to do it or do we hire do we outsource um, what are the resources uh, that's going to go along so a lot of these questions um, you know to find answers to it is still a little bit tricky so you do rely on your network you do rely on people who have done this before and uh, yeah so that's that's I think the biggest challenge all right uh, Ms. Madhura, what are the impediments that you faced? What were the challenges that uh, you faced as a community platform? How did you overcome them? And also that small businesses kind of face, uh, you know, budgetary constraints and various other constraints. So how did you, uh, you know, overcome these to adopt a digital first approach? So I'd say that there are actually three big problems, A, B and C. A, which is awareness. Uh, and Anisha, I think, rightly pointed it out that we don't really have the knowledge. We may not all be techies. It's difficult to find the right talent. B is budgets, because, uh, you know, if, especially if you're bootstrapped, you're trying to really make every penny count. And uh, it's difficult to uh, find those resources, uh, you know, from within uh, to build up a really elaborate tech infrastructure. Um, sure. And, uh, you know, uh, C is really what I would say culture and uh, the whole mindset thing because you know we always feel that we're an agile business we have to do things very fast and uh, normally when you think technology uh, you think of uh, you do think of agility you do think of speed but you also think that it weighs you down at times uh, and you you know you get stuck in that whole mindset of legacy technology then what happens we can't really afford that so these are some of the challenges that typically small businesses face uh, we are no different we have faced all of these problems whether we should buy or build talent, that's also another uh, challenge that we constantly keep facing. Uh, we did feel that building a community platform helped us a lot because uh, of the situation around us. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. There was a lot of pain in people's minds as COVID was just, it was an absolutely unknown animal which is coming and hitting us. And... Uh, uh, we realized that by changing the, because of the mission and the vision that we had, uh, the, the cha we, we realized that people wanted to convert their pain into purpose. And I think that's what helped us a lot. Uh, so building a community platform, helping people connect with the community, elevate each other, motivate each other. Uh, I think the entire spirit of the organization really helped us, uh, you know, uh, ride over those problems and challenges. All right. Uh, uh, Ms. Shevel, would you like to add something here? Your learnings, you know, how did you uh, cope up with the existing challenges and survive in the new normal? So I would say that I agree with the other panelists when they say that, you know, there was a difficulty dealing out with the people working on the grassroots, especially mm -hmm. because I deal with the artisans in the rural areas. Uh, talking to them and they don't mm -hmm. have a mobile a phones or any other facility wherein they can connect through the video calls. So reaching out to them uh, was initially a difficulty, but then we had definitely overcome it by providing them the smartphones. And also this has given them the exposure that how they can also explore and develop uh, the, uh, in uh, developing the designs. So for us, it was challenging also to connect not only to the artisan in our manufacturing unit, but also towards our distributors because, you know, uh, however, it also ha help us in connecting to the bigger network, associate, because when you are a small business unit, then you can, uh, by connecting and associate with others, you can supply to the bigger market as well. So social media, I would say, and technology, tech first mindset and strategy also helped us to grow multifold because then we could supply in in a you know better quantity to the buyers because then we could able to reach to the associate and um the earlier you know people who used to be your uh, competitors they also join hands because you know if you have a buyer and other have a supplier it's easy to calibrate and associate through technology all right 
Great. So um, I'd like to address the, uh, the elephant in the room that uh, since we have the privilege of having an all women panel here, uh, running a business in itself is pretty challenging. Multiple factors impact the present and the future of a business. And women business owners, particularly, uh, according to stats, could create, could create 150 to 170 million jobs in India by the year 2030. Yet women entrepreneurs face more biases, more obstacles than their male counterparts. So if you could share your journeys for our audience about what are the barriers that you faced as women leaders, especially in the tech industry or tech focused organizations, and how did you address them? So we could start with you, uh, Anisha. Sure. So, uh, of course, you know, there were some biases uh, when we started out in uh, late uh, 2019. Um, you know, I, I was on a break. I was a new mother and I started language curry. And a lot of people when I was speaking to uh, about the venture uh, with all the seriousness, you know, um, I was, I think, questioned because uh, people assume that, you know, you this is an easy option for me to stay at home and, you know, manage my baby, etc. At that time, COVID hadn't hit. So staying at home uh, wasn't the norm. Uh, but yes, you know, it was unfortunate because my dream and my mission at Language Curry to unite Indian languages and culture, uh, you know, what has been very large since the start. And it has taken, you know, hours and hours of work. And I've never worked so hard in my life before professionally. Uh, so that's one bias with, that women have faced. But I think post-COVID, that is uh, changing. And um, yes, of course, you know, um, in the tech world, um, you wouldn't, I'm not a techie, like I'm an engineering background, but I'm not a software person. So, you know, um, yeah, there are biases as in because it, it is assumed that, you know, startup, uh, that the people who code are generally men and, you know, who sit in a dark room and code away the night away. And that's 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 what people think that, you know, startups, um, is you know, that that's some, something that measures a success factor that you have somebody, you know, who can code all night. So, yeah, so that was one of the bias as well. Sure. And uh, Miss Madhur, I'd like to come to you here. You've been working towards, you know, changing the diversity equation here. So what were your learnings? How did you overcome the impediment that you faced being a woman leader? You know, uh, when we started Aspire for Her, I spoke to a bunch of people and we realized that the main issue, there's actually one main issue which is in, uh, which is in, in, in play here, uh, which is the mindset. And right. we realized that uh, there are five broad factors over here. One is the lack of mentors and role models, relatable mentors and role models in the immediate network of the young women of our country. We realize that there's not enough resources to let people know that you can upskill and reskill yourselves and actually apply for the jobs of India's tomorrow. Uh, we realized that uh, there were not enough uh, successful stories of women doing well in the media. Uh, the mainstream media did not celebrate women and their careers. Uh, we realized that there was a complete lack of community feeling of uh, people really motivating each other and learning as a learning and growing as a team. Uh, and what we finally re realized is that we wanted to get all of these women into one of the three E's, either employment, entrepreneurship, or education, which leads to one of these two. And this is how we got our five-point mindset change model uh, to ensure that the main problem that we have uh, to, to navigate these challenges, the mindset, uh, that is uh, changed for the women themselves, for society, and for the ecosystem. Great. Uh, I'd like to come to you, Ms. Shrikrapa. We're talking about the power of technology uh, for small and medium enterprises. So how do you really uh, choose the right tech partner for a digital first business model? And you and Dell, of course, have end-to-end -end technology solutions, product features and services that can empower small businesses. So what would you like to share? So, uh, so Rishita, thank you. Uh, I, I think Anisha and Madhura called out uh, the uh, not so tech uh, uh, aware or uh, uh, not so tech savvy as one big area of uh, concern for small businesses, and, and that's not a concern for small concern for everybody in terms of not being aware. And the plethora of opportunities available in terms of, uh, you know, if you open a website, you're going to find tons of opportunities in terms of what is you know, what is the product of choice or tech uh, uh, partner of choice. I think the biggest thing is in terms of where, what is your customer base like? Uh, or what is the maturity of the customer in terms of movement? Last three years we spoke about how the maturity has suddenly risen as far as technology requirements. What is the general customer like? Where are they located? What is the geography here? 
what is it that you want for them in terms of uh, you know save and get tickets and and, and so what is the kind of computer power that you need for your kind of customer? don't look at only look at you know um, thousand days and three thousand days ahead in terms of what you need to do that. so from a tech part of perspective it is important things are important is one your your customer is of the opinion that whatever solution they are working on today whether it's payment or whether it's choice of online uh, option you're giving them it's all safe and secure their information is safe and secure so security data protection is very very important what is the customer spread like is your tech partner is spread uh, across uh, the zones that you're looking at is national is international another thing third there are payments happening to them what is the whole security in terms of you know money going in and coming out another thing fourth is how secure is the environment you're working with You're storing everything there. It is your locker of the house where you keep your gold. So, how secure mm-hmm. is that environment? The most important. And the fifth, I think, was called out the ease of ease and efficiency of work. How difficult is it? Is it complex? Is it easy to do yet secure? Uh, is the fifth thing I would look at. And put all those things together, and then work with um, your tech partner to see how much comfortable they are able to make it. And yes, somebody did call out. I think Madhur Ajit said budget and. Good stuff. So budget is the is the sixth thing to look at in terms of choosing your tech part. You know that that's why when we have our conversations, this is we have to have flexibility. Say I need to come to power. You have the ability to scale as you. Those kind of the conversations you need to have with your tech part. All right. Uh, Ms. Shaver, I'd like to bring you in here. Um, SMBs are evolving according to the digital requirements of the day, and the ones who are generate up to 50% more sales and display enhanced productivity, and they have almost doubled their benefits. So, in your mind, what are the top three benefits of digitization? So, I would say uh, that first and foremost is uh, one of the most notable attribute of a digital strategy. is the ability to drastically reduce cost because it's cost efficient and then um, another one to me is reach you know the digital service can reach customers anywhere across the globe and can scale faster to serve enormous numbers of them than any other approach can possibly hope to so and then i would say i can add many but i would say that the another one is to connect with your customers directly uh, in a deeper storytelling way you can put small videos to connect uh, currently you know uh, if you're not able to connect to your customers and understand their requirement and a feedback which is very important so through digitally first media a medium we can definitely hear more indirectly to our customers and it's easier to collect data and provide best better customer service and then i would say that another benefit is insight into your audience as well mm, when assets are published digitally though you will garner far more information about your audience this typically includes the gender geographic location interest and i would say from here smbs will be able to optimize strategy to better target in the future so i would say by enforcing a digital first strategy they'll also be able to provide better customer service because that's that's really is a core part of any business great thank you for that uh... and uh, coming to you uh, ms anisha what do you uh, think are the primary advantages of setting up a digital first business um see of course i mean we are an app so um, you know to start off with the we are digital and uh, when it comes to uh, learning specifically language learning uh, for now there hasn't been any app that uh, you know teaches indian language in a colloquial manner so we were the first ones to do that um and a lot of uh, you know when we spoke to a lot of our customers initially uh, the, the ways to learn a language whether that's indians or whether that's you know nris or expats who are coming to india was largely uh, through the offline classes or you know getting one on one tuitions and um, you know we have really changed that because uh, learning through an app uh, first of all you know the, uh, this you can manage your time uh, you can learn and you can practice your pronunciation uh, and you can do it on your own uh, you know um, on your own schedule 
and that's what has really helped uh, in the learning perspective for languages and and we have uh, we have you know the mammoths such as duolingo who have done it for other languages so there is a, there is a follower in that in that sense for language learning and yeah so all right uh, miss madura what could you like to share with us on this one so you know we went through a very strange journey uh, when we started aspire for her i was trying to solve the india problem uh, because india was uh, at the bottom in terms of women's economic participation and i saw the best and the brightest women around me and i was confused and sad that this was happening mm -hmm. but uh, as we went on to social media and as we started telling our story we realized that women across the globe uh, were interacting with us so we had women from peru and sierra leone and all kinds of countries that i hadn't even properly heard of were actually coming and becoming members at aspire for her so today we have women across 60 different countries which i definitely definitely would not have managed to do if we did not have this digital first approach which came to us not really as a boon at that time but it turned out to be one every cloud has a silver lining and the pandemic had this definitely Absolutely. Um, i'd yes. like to bring you in uh, mr kripa let's talk about uh, the power of technology and how it can actually leverage talent and break through physical boundaries so tech has the ability to you know um, uh, surpass physical boundaries bring forth talent from small towns and not just traditional talent so what are your thoughts how can tech mitigate bias and drive social change uh you know rochia we've uh, i've got a, a program which, uh, which we had initiated about a year and a half back it was back we worked on a lot with uh, uh you know called the dell resident program uh, where we actually gone to uh women in tier 2 tier 3 and even even more tier 4 and identified uh, entering uh, colleges uh, and uh, pickly colleges and and identified women Uh, who we believe, uh, you know, are uh, we we spoil the choice in this, but we got spiral talent across the country, uh, and we picked uh, a few. And and the hunger we found in some of those, uh, in terms of learning you know, languages and things like that, and coming for our interview, uh, we got got we we just still still running the first program on that. But we've actually gone really at deep uh, parts of India to find real talent, which we hope is the same with us. That's one. uh the, and that's happened because we've been able to sort of uh, sitting in bangalore we've been able to in bangalore and our piece of tell we've been able to contact people through zoom and other methods of communication and, and interview them and, and they are sort of staying in online right now because we were not uh, in office for the last uh, year and hopefully that if they they are making a career and we are benefiting from the the vast country of talent that's one we also have this thing called Uh, you know, career restart even with the kind of program in terms of the fact that you know, you've got different pieces. Anisha mentioned the uh, you know, child and 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 the, the, the how your calendars get changed, and that's an inevitable part of our life. So how do you sort of uh, restart careers and give the option? This whole period has taught, has taught us that technology is available in any part of the world. So how do you restart that whole? Uh, some, sometimes you know you have very talent in technology. in the mm -hmm. corner of the world we have actually hired people uh, you know and said yeah, i am i am location agnostic to sit and deliver for us what so that the career restart is another program that we need to be passionate about in terms of restarting and as long as you have the talent and the hunger we react to the period hub sure uh, miss anisha uh, would you like to share something here about you know technology actually cutting across through physical boundaries Yeah, I mean, uh, we are live example of that. So we are we are headed in Gurgaon. Our CTO is in Gurgaon, but our developers are in Gujarat. Our tester is in Pune, and uh, you know we we've, we've gotten uh, we've we have interviewed so many, uh, but the talents that we found in smaller cities, uh, you know, uh, the capabilities are at power with the big city talent for sure. Uh, you know, these are really smart developers, uh, and and they um, you know. uh apart from just you know developing um the, for us especially you know as a as a company that is you know working on indian culture and language is so many of these resources having a culturally diverse resource also helps you in other areas such as content and you know collaborations so that really helps 
and of course you know um, a lot of these people we never met after we hired them for a year or you know a year and a half but we speak every day and our deliverables you know are easily tracked these days through tools so yeah so that's been a great it, it's worked very well for us yeah, yeah you know uh, you know this is a fantastic point if you don't mind i want to put a bit caveat and sorry to keep you joy i'm putting on sure. a little bit of a joy here the only challenge in this whole process of doing the technology get together is how do you know you know because you've gone to work you should know that you have this coffee conversation after all on with the extend conversation Engagement levels in terms of uh, Anisha mentioned, you know, we have not had, but we are now. How do you sort of uh, periodic? Why am I engaged? Why have an? Why do I have an emotional bonding with language study? Is one thing that is my important thing to set aside. Otherwise, it's just one of the products. All right. Great. Thank you for that uh, pertinent point there, Ms. Sri Kripa. Uh, Ms. Madhura, would you like to share uh, your personal learnings while you were empowering women across uh, the world and building a community platform? How did technology help you mitigate through biases? Well, on a lighter note, uh, even technology has a lot of biases. You know, there's a lot of talk on algorithmic bias going on. Uh, but I'll be a little futuristic here. And, uh, you know, I will talk about... Uh, what we call career previews and how we want to use technology in that uh, rather than talking too much about the past uh, well you know we feel very strongly if she can see it she can be it and the minute it's a she some of the career options and career trajectories that you present to the woman and to the world around her there's a lot of bias which creeps in so for example if i'm a woman and i want to live the life of a pilot and i want to check it out i want to test drive being a pilot uh, there will be a lot of people from society who will come and tell her that this is not uh, you know this is not an appropriate career choice um, or if i'm a woman and i want to become a chef or i want to become a computer scientist often there will be disparaging remarks but in the metaverse uh, sort of a situation and not that I understand it very well, I just understand it in, at a broad level. Uh, if an avatar actually comes and wants to try out all of these careers and test out the career previews, then there will be no bias uh, and nothing that will actually stop the girls uh, from reaching their dreams and at least trying out various careers uh, in the alternate universe and trying to figure out uh, what they want to do in life. So that's what I feel this is a little futuristic and we are still very far away from that. Maybe I will talk to Sri Kripa after this to see if Dell can help us set it up. I'm sure they can. Yes, definitely do that. And, and coming to you, Ms. Sri Kripa, in this fast paced, complex environment, it's very important for small and medium businesses to find the right partner to drive innovation and unlock new opportunities. So what are the factors that they should keep in mind while making that choice? for a digital first strategy uh, or a dig digital first mindset? So thank you, Ruchira. I, I think the first thing I think we spoke about uh, two questions back was having a plan in place. Uh, and it's like, it's like you know, studying for your examination. Say you're on a board exam. Having a plan in place, knowing what your syllabus is, what is the uh, what is the kind of pattern that you have seen in the past as far as your uh, you know, customers are concerned. So let's just play this out for, a, uh, for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're if you're saying in in a space which is uh, providing tech support, um, you know there are plenty of tech supports around in the country in the in the world. Uh, what is the zone that you want to be in? What is your plan in terms of how much you want to expand? Where are your customers going to be in? Uh, what, in tech support, what is that whole zone you want to be in? You already have, you already are a, a small business. You know those portions there. Uh, now identifying the pain points in terms of speed. Typically, why do you have technology? I think. Uh, Shower uh, sort of called this out thing efficiency is the first thing to look at, and second thing to look at is the, the cost optimization. So, if you want efficiency, what are your mm -hmm. zones that you have to get? Is it the compute power of your machine? Is it the servers? Is it storage? These are all the things which, you know, uh, from our perspective in Dell, that these media we work on. So, is it compute power? Do you need better sort of uh, uh, machines to work with? Uh, where is your data? How? Uh, and then comes the fact that your customers are now with you. Uh, how safe is their data? Where is the storage? Um, is it is, is it PII information? Is it PII information? Mm -hmm. Are safe and secure? Uh, you know, retrievability. Now, the customers put data. A lot of times you go and do online business. 
a lot of data pops up and and yeah. and you feel thrilled. for a second you feel thrilled with data but if you think back you say my god i don't know what more information they have about this it. scary portion exactly. of you have to assure your customer that your data is secure sometimes yeah. that information is there how safe is that whole in you don't want to be typing that banking information again and again so that doesn't save you time but you have to have a secure and governed environment to be able to put it safe so those some of the things we look at in terms of scale is the other thing where all do you want this to happen there are the gateways that you need for uh, is, is it national at national is it here one to two to four international what are the what are the governance you need to look at are some of the areas which you would uh, you know you would from a small and business small business sort of put down things that what i want and then discuss with your tech partner how do you how do you sort of work around me and not have multiple people to sort of go and work with so that you have one next to go for a for lab for better work all right great so some very interesting uh, insights over there but just before we wrap up one last question for all of you uh, as leaders of small businesses what do you think the road ahead looks like so starting with you ms shaver what do you think uh, the road ahead looks like for small and medium businesses and even for women leaders so i would say that that's the new normal and uh, i would say that uh, if we adopt the technology as early as possible the road ahead is bright and is smooth um i would uh, say that you know that uh, we have seen in the past that companies like nikon and canon you know if you if you don't adopt the technology you definitely going to suffer i would mm-hmm. give a example here of jeff bezos the founder of amazon that he understood the importance of tech- e-commerce and now everybody knows that who he is so earlier is better and i would say that there are things that we all have to live with adopt and technology is not only um, a change i would say it's a way of life if you know th- there are the current generation i would say so called millennial these people have not seen the life without technology or yes. internet for them uh, you know doing uh, anything not only business but even studying or taking classes or reaching out to subject matter expert learning something or uh, you know for us it was libraries to go and look for a book for them it's google and they have data on the finger access so mm-hmm. i would say that everything is so much available for them and if there is any difficulty for them uh, to buy or uh, you know adorn something of course that's a hindrance for them so for all uh, small business owners i would say that adopt technology that's the only way and time to time we have to upgrade and learn and understand that what are the trends and what are the new uh, things we can adopt to get going all right uh, ms madhura what is your insight here or your advice for other small businesses and what according to you does the road ahead look like well i think small businesses are really the engine of growth for tomorrow's india uh, so i see a lot of optimism a lot of innovation uh, and clear directions uh, in terms of global ambitions for small businesses and as far as women uh, in the industry are concerned i just leave all of you with one thought please to continue to aspire for her thank you for that uh, ms shri kripa what is your uh, advice for smbs that are considering making the shift to digital and how does the road ahead look like to you so i want to say something like sare jahan se acha but i'm going to say it is a geometric progression that i'm looking at and to the right. women say embrace this change it is the biggest fun change that's happening to us all right great and uh, ms anisha your personal learnings or personal advice uh like most of the panelists said you know uh, going digital is the new normal and an online presence would be a necessity for all businesses and if you're even a little bit hesitant you know upskilling and networking can do wonders and uh, kudos to women like madhura uh, because if we can make women leaders more visible uh, so many others would be inspired to make a change all right thank you so much ladies it was great speaking to you and learning from your personal journeys and insights and just to sum up clearly digital transformation is the way forward for small and medium businesses and the viral outbreak has provided these businesses an ample opportunity to gain an edge over the more established counterparts by incorporating technology and scaling up 
So thank you so much for sharing your insights and thank you for joining in. Thank you, Ritiran. Thank you. Thank you.